It's Mashal, Magic and Muscles, time to get ripped and go on a journey through anime Hogwarts, yeah! There's some serious whizbiz going on in this world. This aggressively pumping guy's name is Mash, and this is his wrinkly dad, Regro. They live in the woods because Mash is a meathead schizoid who was exiled from society for having no aptitude for magic. He is pure of heart, however. The door is a victim of Mash's excessive power. Regro leaves Mash to house sit while he goes for some errands. He heeds Mash should never venture into the city and heads out. Mash yearns for cream puffs, however, and disobeys his father's guidance. His coinage is horribly mangled from excitement. The baker is shook. Mash's countenance is revealed to the citizens. His face bears no wizardly mark, indicating his lack of sorcery. This guy won the Hogwarts Celebrity Award for being good at school. A scary civil servant is about to invoke the Cruciatus Curse upon a petty thief when he is called to investigate Mash's sudden appearance in town. Mash is in absolute bliss. How could this happen to me? A drunken officer of the law harasses Mash for feeling joy as a pure-hearted boy and with the best of intentions. Mash tears the cop's clothes off to relieve him of his dirtied garment. The frightening autocrat is named Brad. He goes for the arrest while Mash is distracted by Cream Puff but is thwarted by Regro's swift rescue. Brad conjures a space bird to pursue. Mash is scolded and stricken with regret. Regro sends Mash to train while he prepares for his inevitable capture. Mash terrifies the wildlife and returns home to Brad and his posse force choking Reginald in the living room. OG Chan ain't no snitch. He recalls his childhood traumas and panic. The visions of his past reveal that he underachieved at everything except for raising Mash. Mash saved Regro's life by being born pathetic. Inspired by his hallucinations, he suddenly rebels but is cast aside. Vlad starts to channel a chaos bolt when Mash intervenes. The officer from before is once again stripped bare. Mash flings a rad one-liner for intimidation and fails. Brad goes for the kill, but his weaponized lean is deftly parried. Brawled unleashes a barrage of orbs, with each cast being gracefully dispatched. Mash closes the fight by nearly impaling Brad with Regro's wand. Brad sees Mash's potential as a political tool and strikes a deal. Mash must enroll in magic school to become a divine visionary, or be hunted by the police as an outlaw in perpetuity. He accepts immediately, okay. confident in his motivation to live in peace with his dad. The magic school, Easton Academy, is pretentious. This guy is especially pretentious. The entry exam is crawling with all walks of society. Mash perplexes the smug wizard with the ferocity of his preparations. Bad and Ronglo stealthily observe from a distance. Brad painted a fake mage stripe on Mash to avoid suspicions. The exam begins after a brief mystical flaunting. The papers given to the prospective students contain wiggly questions, which need to be dispelled. Mash attempts to ask politely if the words could align themselves. It doesn't work. He resorts to violence, and the magic is intimidated into submission. Perfection. Mash is a magician amongst wizards. Claude Lucci fears the success that Mash is able to achieve and resorts to creating a labyrinth to isolate the weak. Mash passively radiates Sigma energy and attracts a fellow student. She is accident prone. Mash expresses no emotion at her incompetence. It turns out she was hired to impede his ascension to student status. Her restraints are ineffective and Mash effortlessly escapes. Some kind of riddle freak shows up to ruin the mood, incapacitating the agent with his tremendous aura. She believes her fated death to be divine punishment for her deception and is saved by One Punch Man. Mash returned due to pity. He then simply walks out of the maze. Dumbledore spies a young, supple individual who distinguished himself during a fierce situation. Mash is persecuted by the crowd. Go home, they jeer. His morale is crushed. Lucci's operative admits their crimes to the rabble. Gucci leans into his supremacist ideals and challenges Mash to a duel. Mash lacerates his hubris like wheat unto a scythe. Gandalf imposes on their duel and asserts himself as the new proctor of the exam. Mash is whisked into the headmaster's office where the final interview is held. Dumbledore questions various aspects of Mash's performance in the exam to understand his internal motivations, virtues, and philosophies. Mash is delightfully simple. Merlin conjures an enigmatic collection of objects and a big shadow guy made of teeth. 
He invites Mash to an eccentric wizard duel. Mash is unaffected by the headmaster's spell and attempts violence. It doesn't work this time. Mash once more displays his self-sacrificial good boy nature by stopping the blade with his own flesh. Gandalf is shook. He introduces Mash to the concept of noblesse oblige, one's capacity as a powerful being to protect the weak and regulate the strong. Mash has passed his tests and is admitted to Easton Magic Academy. An old woman teaches the plebs how to open a lock, but Sigma Mash already knows how. He's ridiculed for being insolent and responds by asserting that God is dead. A weak yellow-eyed nerd fears Mash's blatant disregard for socio-cultural expectations and discovers Mash's destructive idiosyncrasies. His name is Finn Amiss, Mash's new roommate. Mash introduces Finn to his muscles and they discuss the achievement of divine visionary. One must collect coins by being an excellent student, and the individual who obtains the most becomes the DV. Mush is coming to terms with the difficulty of his situation, and offers Finn one of his sacred cream puffs. Mash almost brought a medicinal herb instead of a broom to his flying practice, and has lent a proper broom from Finn. Some Hogwarts hoot nanny happens. Mash can't float his broom and is an easy target for a hoodlum. He solves the issue. Mash's aggressor challenges him to a race and is concussed by his afterimage, Smug Malfoy. Finn deduces that Mash threw his broom, ran, then mounted it midair. The bully is silenced by his boss, Lloyd Cavill, who reaches out the hand of friendship to Mash. Mash deflects with the sheer destructive power of autism. Cavill is enraged and urges him to meet after class. He psychopathically ravages his underling for his personal enjoyment. Finn discloses that Cavill is untouchable due to his noble and venerable lineage. Mash revels in the delectable satisfaction of baking confectionaries and reminisces of time spent with his father. Cavill is stood up and becomes enraged once more. The next day, Mash is accosted by Cavill, who tricks him into servitude. Finn doesn't want to be friends with Mash, but is swayed by his blind innocence. Mash is too dense to understand he is being bullied. He goes to return Finn's textbook only to find Cavill indulging his iconic neo-sadistic fascism. Mash goes to the injured Finn, who confesses to sabotaging his quality of life under the orders of Cavill. Mash doesn't know much, but he understands noblesse oblige. Cavill's melon becomes one with the floor. Mash regrets his actions as the principal, Farman Grego, strolls into the hallway. Unfortunately, the miasma of aristocratic bureaucracy runs deep within the academy's veins, and Mash and Finn are once more verbally assaulted by a lengthy oration of autocratic oppression. The principal's tone of voice triggers a fight or flight response in Mash, who instinctively opts for the former. Fartman fights back, but is returned to the soil. Gandalf attempts to explain the severity of Mash his actions to him, noting that the Bureau of Magic is full of hot-headed divine visionaries who basically rule the world. He then goes on to be the embodiment of punk rock by incinerating Mash's expulsion letter. Dumbledore is a fervent believer in the Dionysian and feels that through Mash's divine simplicity, he will incite a radicalized proletariat rebellion to overthrow the elitist wizard lords of the Bureau. Mash admits to already intending to become a visionary. The headmaster continues by explaining the different houses, dog, bird, and fish. Mash is debilitated by Gandalf's lengthy prose and is verbally resuscitated. Some time later, Mash is invited to join the Quidditch team. Their captain, Tom, is sickeningly extroverted, and Mash folds under the weight of his enthusiasm. The match begins. Mash cannot ride brooms, as he had attempted to explain before, to no avail. The crowd becomes feral in response to Mash disrupting the balance of the game, and they throw detritus to express their displeasure. Tom attempts to inspire Mash into flight by deploying cryptic metaphors about bamboo. His eccentricity is hard countered by Mash's stalwart apathy. Upon returning to his match, the captain is obliterated by a man with ellipses for eyebrows. The bird faction's battle for supremacy is in dire straits now. Mash is inspired by his leader's love for the sport and becomes a helicopter in response. He unleashes a terrifying barrage of boomerang-like pitches securing an uncontested victory. His 
companions are astonished, and the spectators exalt his glorious subjugation of the dog dormitory. Mash receives a silver coin as their champion and is embraced by Tom. A threatening twink with two wizard stripes destroys a newspaper in expectant rage over Mash's success. Mash is drowned in requests from his zealous disciples when Lance Gown, the first year prodigy, slurps Mash's friends into a bong and challenges him to a duel over possession of the visionary coins. God explains that the wizardly face tattoos are a visual indication of magical ability, so people with two or three are mega juiced on that raw destructive power. Lance mistakes Mash's compassion for weakness and tries to smush him with his gravity attack. Mash doesn't really care about physics and retaliates by flinging a root. Lance's dark secret is uncovered. He has a sister complex. Mash doesn't understand, but keeps an open mind. Lance proceeds to become enraged, threatens to drop Master's friends, and has a flashback of times when he resorted to violence for his sister's sake. He isn't a bad guy, just extremely, disturbingly obsessed with his sister. She has an incurable disease, which is slowly draining her magical power. She will eventually become societally deceased and handed over to the government for being frail. It seems as though Mash and Lance share a common goal, the abolishment of the ruling administration. Mash once more proves that physics doesn't apply to those of a pure heart and teleports to the rescue. The drop bottle was a decoy, however, and Mash makes attempts at diplomacy. Lance comes to the realization that his sister would probably approve of Mash and accepts his defeat. Mash receives the promised coin and is once more drowned by his fervent devotees. Mash and Finn discuss his newly acquired coins. Flynn experiences pure dread by remembering that his potion's homework is due. The two panic and are scolded by Lance, a top student. He is pacified by his sister's countenance and recites poetry with his death rattle. Lance assists the slackers with their homework. They practice silencing some freaky screaming vegetables. Mash slaps his seething salad into submission and they attempt to produce a finished potion. Mash creates a cream puff by accident, even under direct supervision, he is only able to make cream puffs. Lunch is disturbed by Mash's incompetence and vows to defeat him in combat one day. A spiky fellow gets aggressive with some students in the hallway. He has a main character complex. This guy recites a sermon to his underlings and casts his numerous coins to the floor. He instructs his followers to forcibly seize Mash's visionary tokens. The next day, the students are attending class in the woods when a narcissist, Don Barrett, introduces himself. Don is jealous of Mash's ability to attract women passively and spits in disgust. He bleeds from his eyes from the frustration. Some guy arrives by green flames and announces that the bird and wolf faction will be competing against each other to defeat various giga scorpions. A psychopathic mage with two stripes suddenly attacks Mash. Lance reveals that this character is prone to malevolence and should be avoided. Mash was only interested in protecting his pocket cream puff, however. Mosh becomes lost in the forest and stumbles across Dawn who is placated for being overly brazen. An altercation between two students ensues. Don is an irredeemable simp and explodes the aggressor. The reward of physical contact is almost too much for him to bear. He self-flagellates to maintain composure, unaware of the irony. Unfortunately, Bon is being played by a manipulative succubus. She goes for her next victim, but Mash is too dense to be beguiled by the seductive charm of her womanly wild. She reveals that she is under threat from the psychopath from earlier, who is named Silva. Dawn is swayed by her lamentations, and Silva arrives to indulge in a bit of villainry. Dawn explodes. It is ineffective. Silva earthbends the sauce out of Dawn and accidentally slaughters Mash's beloved cream puff. Dawn is worried. Silva taunts in retaliation. He puts forth a challenge. Endure five hits from his magic and no harm will come to the girl. John accepts. Salvo tricks him into taking ten strikes instead. Dawn prepares for his fate and is pummeled repeatedly. He survives nine attacks, then monologues briefly. The final tenth is extra chunky and brings him down. Silva reveals that his accomplice is a sociopath. The poor lad is devastated. Mash finally has had enough and steps up to conquer Saliva's patented ten hit challenge. Silva makes an attempt at molestation on the disabled Dawn, but is interrupted by Mash. Mash resists Silva's rocks and activates a sorcery of his own creation, Tricep Magic. Silva's pride is under threat for the first time in his life, and he goes berserk. Mash apathetically witnesses the flame of Silva's hubris fade and waits patiently for Silva to recover so they can continue their 10-hit challenge. 
Silva is afraid. A massive, angry crab emerges from the forest to feast on supple human flesh and it's dead. Silva is shook. Mash notices how pathetic Silva looks and allows him to flee out of pity. The woman lies as easily as she breathes, and if she breathes, she is a thought. Mash suplexes the hoe and reveals his advocacy for gender equality. Don feels inferior after the battle, but immediately falls deep in love with the blonde lady after she speaks to him. Don apologizes to Mash for getting him involved and is autistically deflected. Lamp deduces that Silva was likely targeting Mash as an emissary for the dog dorm. The leaders of said dorm, the Magia Lupus, seek to sustain indubitable domination in the collection of divine visionary coins in an effort to control the influx of new members to the substantially oligarchic Bureau of Magic. Mash's pants glow. It's a fresh, sparkly new gold coin. He recalls the day when he was sorted into the bird dorm. It was an exciting day for many. The dead unicorn, confident in his ability to sort people correctly for hundreds of years, is stumped by Mash's complete deprivation of thought. It recites recipes for cream puffs like a broken robot and decides that cream puff lovers must be bird people. Lance warns Mash of the wolf gang once more. Sometime later, Marsh is lost. His optimal result would be to find a guide through this door. However, the archaic riddle of push or pull resounds within Mash's vacant Gord. Silva is Pinocchioed by the mentally deranged cloister of dog people. He just called a doll his mother. Sane people probably don't go doing that kind of thing. Mash is not the type for riddles and strolls into the den of wolves. And that's the end of part one of Mashal. Hello? Thank you for watching all the way through. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It actually helps me quite a lot. I have a Patreon, should you be willing to separate from a few coins. Thanks again. Uh, bye.